Hello everybody, this is Andy from Andy's Travel Blog. That is the Marina Bay Sands, which means only one thing. I am in Singapore. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because Sony released a new camera a week earlier in Singapore than they did in the United States. That camera is this, the Sony A7R Mark III. So, it's a nice coincidence being here on a business trip. I could pick one of these babies up, test it out, and let you know what I think. So we have this beautiful setting with wonderful architecture, uh, but let's go over some of these features first. Okay, so let's talk A7R 3 Now I'm shooting this video with the A7R 2 camera, so I'm intimately familiar with that camera. I got it on launch day and I've used it almost every day since, and it's one of my favorite cameras of all time. Uh, this is gonna share the same sensor as the A7R 2 the 42.4 megapixel sensor that has great dynamic range. Uh, and I love the images I get out of that sensor. And, and kind of the theme of what Sony did with their A7R 3 is they took the best of what was available from their other cameras and put it together in like one of the best Frankenstein monsters the world has ever known. So this has the sensor from the A7R 2 that I'm shooting this with. But then it has a lot of the form factor of the Sony A9 to the degree that any of the accessories that you purchase for the A9, any of like the, the battery grips or anything like that, will also work on the A7R 3 So the biggest thing is the battery. So this is a bigger battery than the A7R 2 It's the one, same one they use in the A9. It gets 2.2 times the battery life. So that's great. Now another thing a lot of people said they wanted was this, two memory card slots. So they have that in the A9, but now they have it in the A7R 3 Another thing that people said they wanted was a touch screen. So you have a touch screen now. I don't use it as much for still photos as I do for video because with the touch screen, you can do a simulated like rack focus where you can change focus from one spot to the other just by touching the screen. And then another thing they have here is an autofocus joystick. So it's a nicer having a joystick instead of having to press this button or this button a lot. Um, other than that, the top of it is gonna resemble the former A7R 2 uh, but the bottom and the dials over here will look more like the A9. Now what's something else they cobbled together? So they have the, the, some of the body features of the A9, they have the sensor of the A7R 2 I don't have it with me, it's back in the hotel. But the A6500, the, um, a lot of the video technology that the A6500 had <laughs> was moved to the A7R 3 so the 6500 shot in 5K, when you uh, shot it, it, it shoots basically in 5K and then down samples at 24K so you get sharper image quality. Um, and so what Sony did here with the A7R 3 another thing that the A6500 could do is it could shoot up to 120 frames a second in 1080p. Now that's really good if you want to be doing some like slow motion or anything like that. But the A7R 3 can now shoot 120 frames per second at 1080p. If you shoot in the APS-C or Super 35 mode in, for video, it's going to shoot at 5K and downsample to 4K, so you get really, really sharp footage. Uh, and they also have uh, S-Log 3, uh, which in addition to S-Log 3, they have some, some other, uh, I, don't, yeah, I don't really know the technicals of all this, but they have some, uh, some great new gammas, I guess, to take care or to cater to the new HDR kind of TVs, so your high dynamic range televisions. Other than that, it's the same old, same old, so I mean it shoots 4K internally. Um, another thing, they actually have a USB-C connection now, so that's supposedly quicker transfer. Um, and then they have a sync outlet here. They don't have an FTP like the A9 does, but it's just cool, I, I think they took the most practical of all three cameras, so the A7R 2 the A6500, and the A9, and they put it all in this nice, really versatile camera body uh, that shoots 42 megapixel images, and it's, it's just phenomenal. So uh, I've been around shooting this morning, been taking some architecture pictures and some other types of pictures, and I really think it tells you the story of how this camera actually operates. Okay, so one of the best things that Sony cameras are good for is architecture and cityscape work, just because of the size of the sensor and the dynamic range uh, and the crispiness and the sharpness of this image. Uh, it's, it's really great for shots like that. So I thought, you know, let's test it out. I've shot the Marina Bay Sands plenty of times, but let's just go ahead and grab a picture of it. You can hear the, uh, the shutter sound is a little bit different too. It sounds, I don't know, it just sounds more 
authentic for the lack of a better word. Okay, so I came to one of the most congested places in Singapore to try to get a shot, which is probably not a good idea. Anyways, that is the merlion. That's the, kind of the symbol of Singapore, dating back to the original word for Singapore in Sanskrit, which is Singapura, which means the lion city. Now, at almost any time of day, you'll see people hanging out in front of the merlion. You'll see people posing for those forced perspective shots to make it look like they're drinking from it or something like that. People are always like, is it worth visiting the merlion? I mean, odds are you'll end up next to it at some point on your trip. It's definitely not going out, worth going out of your way for because well, it's a statue of a lion that shoots water out of its mouth. So, if anything, it's teaching children that lions spit waters, water out of their mouths, which is just not factually accurate at all. But anyways, we might as well get a picture, right? All right, so another thing Sony's really proud of when it comes to the a7R 3 is the frames per second. It can shoot at 10 frames per second, 42 megapixel images at 10 frames per second. And I think the buffer size is, I think, 76 images. So you can shoot for seven seconds at 10 frames per second. So I happened to be walking around. I saw this lovely fountain. I was gonna come take a picture of it, but then I realized behind the fountain is a random soccer or football uh, tournament going on. So I thought, okay, there's probably no better place to test you know, high frame rate shooting in a soccer match. So uh, let's go check it out. So they were pretty strict, I mean, not shooting in there because I didn't have a press pass. So I'm just trying to sneak back over here. And we'll just shoot until they tell me I cannot anymore. Which, let's be honest, is probably gonna be pretty quick. So let's take a look here. So I have the 24 to 70 G Master. And so there's a match going on right over here. So I'm just trying to quietly wait until the action comes down to this side. All right, here we go. So what I'm finding is the facial recognition is almost instant. Here we go, here's some action. Very impressed with the speed of this. Autofocus is instantaneous. The shutter's responsive. There's no shutter lag. And uh, yeah, I think the images turned out really well too. All right, so now I'm at Raffles Place with their little famous statue there uh, to illustrate a really cool concept that Sony calls Pixel Shift. Now what Pixel Shift does, or let me take a step back. So the way modern, most modern camera sensors work is they have uh, 42 million pixels. Each one of those pixels has either a red, green, or a blue value. And they have what they call a Bayer array that when you take a picture of it, every color has a red, green, and blue value, right? Every digital pixel will have that value as well. Well, every camera does not take every sampling of every pixel. They take one pixel. So if it's a red, they take a red sampling. And then what the Bayer array does, it approximates what well, the other two values would be based on what the other two values are around it. Uh, and that's why you get things like moray and, and things like that. Whenever you have a very fine sample, you'll see some coloring in there. And that's because of the Bayer array. Well, like digital medium format cameras and things like that will have color wheels where you can actually take each individual color. Uh, but what Sony did, is because they have in-body image stabilization on this, is they have something called pixel shift where the camera will take four pictures and every picture, it will move the sensor. It will move it down one pixel, over one pixel, and back up one pixel. So what you end up getting is every pixel will have a red, blue, and green value. What Sony says is that basically it will lead to sharper images, uh, and it will also lead to better color representation because every uh, pixel will have a true RGB value to it instead of an approximated one. So if you're shooting finer details, it will get rid of moray on, on things like shirts and uh, other stuff like that. Now there's a caveat to it. You cannot handhold and do the pixel shift because the movements are so precise. You have to be on a tripod. And the other thing is the scene that you're taking the picture of, it has to be completely still. So like there's a road in the background. I'm not gonna be taking pictures of that road. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit just to get a picture of the statue so you can see how the colors look on it. Um, simply because it's gonna take four different pictures and it won't really blend them together. You just end up with like hard edges on these things. So. Let me take a picture with this, uh, and then we'll go back to the hotel room. We'll throw all this in Capture One, and I'll give you my final thoughts on the a7R 3 
Okay, so back in the hotel room. It's kind of a mess around here, but that's okay. Let's chat about the A7R III. Um, what are my thoughts on it? So first of all, I think Sony knocked it out of the park, but it's, it's maybe they didn't knock it out of the park, right? So I think the A7R II compared to what was out there in the industry was knocked out of the park. 4K internal, all the stuff that all the other manufacturers couldn't do, and you put 42 megapixels on top of it. I think the A7R II was just a, that was a game changer. I don't think this changed the game. I, instead of, if I use a baseball analogy, like knocked it out of the park, maybe a better analogy is they hit like an RBI double, but it drove in three runs, right? So it's it, the, the improvements that they did, so taking it from like five frames per second up to 10 frames per second, and the buffer size being 76 images over seven seconds at 10 frames a second, stuff like that, it's, it, it may not even seem that impressive, but once you start using it, it just becomes so much more useful to you. And so I, I said in a video the couple, a couple weeks ago about the A7R II that I did not feel like there was a picture I could not take with the A7R II, and I still feel that way. But I think with the A7R III, there's a better chance of me getting an image uh, that I can use, the image that I want. And it's, it basically wraps up all of my Sony cameras into one. Um, with the video features of the A6500, with the body shape and battery accommodation and the dual memory cards of the A9 plus the A7R II sensor, it, it truly is a, a glorious mix of everything that I need in a camera. So I'm very, very happy with it. I do want to point out, because I'm going to post these uh, like full size images. I mean, I can show them to you on YouTube. It, YouTube resolution just isn't that great. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you full size JPEGs over on andystravelblog.com and I'll put a link to that below. I, we do need to talk about this image right here. So this was the pixel shift test image. Now I will post the full size version of this on the blog, uh, but I made one big mistake. I didn't take one without pixel shift. So I can show you this one, but you don't have anything to compare it to. So sorry about that. Uh, to make up for it, I'll show you a much more boring image. Uh, now this is um, the curtains at my hotel room looking out last night, but I think it's actually a better demonstration of what the pixel shift does because uh, I, I on purpose made a, you know, put the camera in a situation there would be some moire on the curtains because it has a really, really fine like weave on the curtains. And so you can see the moire in the non-pixel shift version, and you cannot in the pixel shift version. So I'll put all of that on the blog post at andystravelblog.com. Um, but again, I, I think Sony came out with a great camera. Uh, it's a nice evolutionary improvements to the already amazing A7R II. Is it worth upgrading? If you have the cash, great. If you don't, the A7R II is gonna be fine for a long time. And the A7R III may actually be a great opportunity for people who are looking at the A7R II because there are gonna be a lot of these, a lot more of these I think on the used market and it should be a great chance to get into the A7R II if you've been looking into it for a long time but finances may have been um, you know, a bit of a struggle. So uh, I think it benefits all Sony shooters and it benefits the industry. I mean, we really are in the golden age of photography here to have a 42 megapixel camera that can shoot 10 frames per second without like a battery grip like you need on the Nikon or anything like that. So. Uh, overall, I, it's just been fantastic. I cannot wait for the pictures I will take with this. So um, anyways, uh, until next time, this is Andy from Andy's Travel Blog. Hope you've enjoyed this review. Leave me some comments below to let me know what you think. Um, and as always, uh, subscribe to this channel. Go check out Andy's Travel Blog to keep up with my travel and photography adventures all over the world. So uh, until next time, take care. We'll talk to you soon.